Hello, my name's John Fairweather. We're here at my woodlot and sawmill in North Canterbury. I've been growing eucalypts for 30 years. And what I do here is take trees from their log form, I mill them, dry them, and machine them into high value products. Today we're gonna to be going through each step of that process, and I want to show you the best qualities of a log to maximize returns to the sawmiller and to you, the grower. These trees are eucalyptus nightends. They are 28 years old. Their stocking rate is approximately 200 stems per hectare. They've been pruned pretty much on time to six meters. From a sawmiller's point of view, these nightends are in pretty good shape. The, the butt log is uh, evenly round, so they're not oval, which isn't such a good thing from a sawmiller's point of view. They've definitely been uh, pruned on time, so there are no stubs. So they're quite good butt logs. If we consider the top logs where the branches are, some of these trees are quite good because the branches aren't too big. Uh, some of them, alas, are not perfect and there are some big branches there. I can still use the top log uh, as a sawmiller, but usually the value of the wood isn't so great. Interestingly though, the quality of the wood in the top logs has been shown to be actually quite good. These trees are 28 years old, but they are ready to harvest now. In fact, they could have been harvested earlier. For me and the sawmilling method I use, 30 centimetres small end diameter is the inadequate size, so 30, 40 and 50 centimetre is just fine. And this tree would be roughly about maybe 50 centimetres, so it's big enough to harvest. The important consideration here is sometimes you can grow these trees up to 30 or 40 centimetres and maybe 20 years on a good site. So that really helps the economics and returns from growing eucalypts. Here we are back in my yard and at the sawmill. I've got an important message for you. If you're going to spend time looking after your eucalyptus trees, you need to make sure that when they're harvested, they get to the sawmiller quickly. The problem with eucalypts is they tend to split. So you have to arrange for them to be processed so you can get the good value out of those trees. Here we've got some logs that I'm going to mill later today. Uh, this is eucalyptus nightends, eucalyptus regnans, and these two are nightends as well. These logs have got some small splits, but nothing real serious at this stage. And this one's got no splits at all. So these are good from a sawmilling point of view. This log here has had log shield painted on the end of it when it was cut to length, and that's helped keep it in good condition. These other logs are freshly cut because I left the tree intact on the ground for over 18 months. Because eucalypts have a tendency to split, the most important thing you can do to maximize your value is get log shield on the cut ends of the logs as soon as possible, within 24 hours preferably. If you have to do it yourself, get the log shield painted on or otherwise arrange for your contractors to do it. This is the most important thing to ensure the quality of your logs. Eucalyptus logs have a lot of tension in them and so there are a variety of different methods that you can use to mill them effectively. The method I'm using has been developed by Dean Setchell and Lee Legler, and basically the first cut is through the middle to release the tension in the log. Then I'll rotate the two halves and saw down from the top, producing the boards. These boards will then go through an edger to be straightened up. For those first few boards you saw me cutting, I've taken one and I've got it here. So it shows the signs here of an end split coming in. Another kind of split here, I'm not too sure what's caused it, but it is a, another defect. And it shows some deterioration on the sapwood because the tr log's been lying around for a long time. And it shows a, a knot here, again, decreasing its quality. Notwithstanding those problems, we've still got some decent heartwood through here. And after this goes through the edger and I take out the sapwood and I'll try and take out that knot, I'll be left with a higher quality board, but narrower, coming through here where the heartwood is. So with the milling and processing method I use, after the boards come off the sawmill, they go through a two saw edger to be straightened up. And they come down this conveyor here and are stacked. 
and it's very important if you are dealing with timber that you carefully stack it with stickers at a appropriate spacing perfectly lined up one on top of the other so I've got this frame here to help me do that and for a stack like this this was made yesterday overnight I put carpet and a tarpaulin on so it didn't dry out too rapidly because eucalypts want to dry out fast and then the troubles happen so I use to slow down the rate of drying a product called microclimate cloth or frost cloth and I'll show you a completed stack shortly but we put two layers of this around the outside to slow the air movement down so here we are in the drying yard and this stack we completed yesterday it shows the two layers of microclimate cloth wrapped around the complete perimeter of the stack and then in addition to that for the first two months of drying just a cheap old blue tarpaulin it's not too expensive that gets stapled on there like so this stays on for two months summer or winter at the stage two months and then that comes off to finish air drying there's also a waterproof cover with weight just to keep the timber stable so after the stacks have been air dried for two or three months and the moisture content of the wood is under 20 percent then it's time to bring them into a kiln to be dried down to 12 percent in my case I have a solar kiln uh, just heated by the Sun very low cost to run so this is the kiln chamber here with some timber currently being dried so there are four stacks of timber here hot air or warmed air is blown down the gap in the middle circulates through goes back up gets heated by the solar collector and this I've measured the moisture content this morning and the timber when it went in the other week was about 16 percent now it's down to about 13 percent moisture content so once the timber is down to 12 percent in the solar kiln I can bring it into the shed here where it'll keep reasonably warm and dry this is the current season's kiln dried stock and I'll process it through a, a Logosol four cider and mainly produce tongue and groove flooring. So this is a sample of completed tongue and groove flooring. In addition to flooring I can produce or starting to produce laminated bench tops and I'm able to use wood that might have a defect on the face side of it but it's very good on the edge so by laminating you can still get quite a serviceable uh, quality finish and this particular one is quite thick and solid it will make an excellent heavy duty bench top or a table okay we've got some samples of tongue and groove flooring put together here into sample squares here's some uh, x150 millimeter boards uh, these samples have just been finished with Cabot's clear floor just an example of a, a relatively easy to use and common finish this sample over here shows some live knots and people actually quite like that feature compared to the clear wood of these ones here but this is an example of what you can get if you prune and manage your trees on time you get the clear wood timber which typically has a higher value than a knotty grade these samples here show some of the variation that's possible with eucalyptus night ends flooring this sample here is just the plain uh, sanded finish wood this one has got the Cabot's clear floor on it and you can see some natural variation here from the top to the bottom and this one here it's the same wood but it's got tongue oil on and it's brought out more of a red color okay I've shown you over all the steps of the operation all the way from the trees in the forest through the milling drying and processing eucalypts have got great potential they can grow really well but it's important to pay attention to what you do in the forest and how you manage it so that people like me the sawmillers can, can get a good return from it and you can get a good return and it's important to take care of the logs when they're harvested making sure they get to the sawmiller in good condition